All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your SmackDown review for February 16th, 2024. Hollywood Rock is back, y'all. I love this segment last night. It was a pretty much a combination of his Hollywood Rock uh, outfit with his uh, with the sh with the skinny shades, and then he had on he used he used to wear a black vest, a black leather vest was Hollywood Rock, but for this one he switched it up. He's still wearing a vest, but now it's his uh this he used to wear those uh those uh, Versace silk shirts back in the day. So he did like a combination. So you got the Hollywood Rock shades with the with the silk Versace uh vest. So I thought that was kind of dope. He like merged them. He combined his uh, two gimmicks together, I guess, the outfit wise. And then so yeah, it's been so I thought it was a great segment. At the end, outside of that, thought it was really okay. No, not not a lot of happened. Not a lot happened. I liked the uh, outside of the the last segment. I like the addition of they got Braun Breaker now on SmackDown. So hopefully that should be a good thing. He's their future star, future world champion. Pretty obvious. He's got the size. Could talk a little bit on the mic. I mean, improve his mic skills a little bit from some of the clips I've seen online. Of Braun Breaker, um, and yeah, and then just a bunch of random uh, elimination chamber qualify matches. It's not a whole lot there; just random matches to qualify for the chamber. We got the full field on the men's side, so we got all six spots filled up. The women's chamber does one spot left. They're gonna do a. They showed at the end last night a uh, last chance battle royal for the women's side. So we'll see who gets that last spot. Yeah, so, yeah, I thought it was like an okay, decent SmackDown last night. Okay, some of the story, uh, they have still haven't explained two weeks ago since the whole Cody stepping aside for The Rock storyline. I was like, just turned into a mess. Still, it's been two weeks. Cody still hasn't explained why he said he won't face Roman at WrestleMania, and now he pretty much changed his mind and he, he is facing Roman, so... In two weeks, he still hasn't explained that. And neither has The Rock explained what he said to Cody Rhodes two weeks ago on that SmackDown. So, it's been two weeks, so I don't know if they're going to wait a little bit longer. I don't see the point of waiting to explain what happened there, or they're just not going to talk about it. So, yeah. But you think two weeks went by, and they still haven't... They probably should have said something about it, tied up to tie up that loose end, but they didn't. And then the other thing was, uh, wasn't The Rock and uh, the Bloodline supposed to confront Triple H uh, last night? Because didn't uh, Paul Heyman tell him that The Rock and Roman Reigns are going to be here next week? And Triple H said, I'm looking forward to it. And then Triple H just, he didn't show up. So are they, are they, they didn't do it last night. So are they saving it for another date? This confrontation between Triple H and The Rock now, it looks like. So we'll see what happens there. All right, so SmackDown start off with the first of four qualifying elimination chamber qualifying matches. First one was Kevin Owens versus Dominic Mysterio. About uh, middle of the match, our truth just shows up. <laughs> this dude's the funniest character in WWE right now, man. He's hilarious. And then uh, KO hit a clothesline and he hit a senton. And he hit a cannonball in the corner. KO hit a frog splash for a two count. Dominic hit X Factor for a near fall. It was like a botch or something. Kevin Owens tried to block it, but it just turned it up. It just didn't look right when he fell down or he hit the move. Dominic goes for the three amigos. He hits two of them. KO blocks a third one. And then he tries to go for three amigos. And KO hits two. And then KO was going for the third one. Dominic countered it into a DDT for a two count. KO hit a swanton for a near fall. And then Dom hit the 619. He got a two count. And then uh, at this point, he tells R2, hey, go get me a chair, man. You're, you're, you're in the judgment day. <laughs> R2 says, I'm not. You said I'm not in the judgment day. <laughs> and Dominic's like you are. So they just kept going back and forth here. And then so R2 goes to grab the chair. Hold on. Yeah, right there. 
So he's like conflicted. He doesn't know what to do. And then he just sets up the chair. He just sits on it out on the outside there. And then KO hits a pop-up powerbomb for the win. So KO picks up the win for uh, after, or I guess Dominic. So he's the fifth guy to qualify for the men's chamber match. And then I guess our truth is still in the judgment day. <laughs> it looks like. Just gonna keep going. The storyline going on and on, even though even though they whoop, they already whooped his ass like twice or three times already. Still thinks he's in the Judgment Day. All right, we got a backstage segment with Drew McIntyre. Says there's only one superstar that needs to win. Says I gotta win for Raw. I gotta win for the people. I'm the savior of WrestleMania. Four years ago, my moment was stolen from me. And then Elliot Knight shows up. Let me talk to you. You talk about your moment being stolen. Your moment can get stolen one more time at the Elimination Chamber. Yeah. And then Drew says, All this bravado with a top personality. I see right through you. This all comes from a place of insecurity. When the bell rings, that's when you're going to lose them. Produce results. You don't produce titles. They'll turn on you. Look at, look at my resume. It's stacked. As long as I've been, and then Ellie and I responds, as long as I've been here, you haven't been a champion of anything. Yeah. You've been losing for two years. And then he he shows Drew McIntyre that CM Punk graveyard t-shirt. He's like, next to CM Punk on the tombstone, I could see DM Hunk on there. And then uh, Ellie Knight's like, oh, we're just talking. And then he got a bunch of security and officials and refs, and they all break it up. And he's like, well, we're just talking. We're just talking, man. That's it. So yeah, that was it for that. I thought that was an okay segment between Drew and LA Knight. They're going to have a match next week on SmackDown. And they taped it last night, so people are probably going to check the spoilers anyways. Alright, next up we got Zelina. This is a second uh, Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Zelina Vega versus Tiffany Stratton. You got LW LDF in the front row. And then LWO show up. Carlito and the other two guys. So Zelina grabs Electra Lopez. Uh, she like pulls her over the barricade and she tosses over back over the barricade back into the crowd. So I don't see what the point of that was. It's kind of stupid right there. And then Tiffany Stratton wins with the moonsault. She pretty much botched it. I don't. She's done in. I think she's at two or three matches. Uh, you got Corey Graves calling it the prettiest moonsault, and she's botched it like every time she's done it. So. Can't be the prettiest. Probably going to be the ugliest moonsault. So, yeah. But she'll get... She'll get... Uh, you, see, you, you see botches every now and then in matches, but for your finisher, come on, man. You got to... You, you can't botch a finisher, man. All right. Next up, we got a segment in the back with the OC or the club or whatever this crew is called. Um, Meechin says, AJ, you haven't texted us or called us. And then uh, Carl Anderson says, AJ forgot where he came from. And then this pissed off a AJ. So AJ Styles, he slaps him. And then Carl says, that was anyone else. And then AJ says, that's what's holding you back, Carl. And then Anderson says, why don't you try that again? So it's pretty much irrelevant in this group. I don't see you know, whatever AJ is. So AJ, AJ going to split from them. Don't really care about this either. Next up, we got Authors of Pain. They win a match versus a bunch of jobbers from NXT. Like one or two minutes. Trying to build their uh, win, them a winning streak, I guess. They're going to start squashing jobbers. Until they get faces a big opponent. But they're facing the Street Profits next week. So they beat a bunch of jobbers and they're already facing the Street Profits. We'll see how long this feud with Street Profits goes for. Karen Cross probably guys are probably gonna interfere. All right, next up we got a, another qualifying match for the chamber. It's the Miz versus Logan Paul. Pretty much a back and forth match throughout the whole match. Miz hits a clothesline. Logan Paul hits a springboard clothesline, and then he hit a splash onto the apron on the Miz. Miz hit a flatliner for a two count, and Logan Paul hit a skull crusher finale. He's using the Miz's move, 
to try a win, but he gets a near fall. And then Logan Paul hit a punch, like a knockout punch, and then he hit the slam for a three count. So Logan Paul is the last guy to qualify on the men's side for the chamber match. So we got LA Knight, Drew McIntyre, Red Yorton, Logan Paul, Bobby Lashley, and Kevin Owens on the in the men's elimination chamber match. So it's pretty much a stacked field on that side. All right, next up we got Naomi. It's the fourth and final Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Naomi wins versus Aldo Fire. She didn't really care for it. All right, next up we got uh, Nick Aldis. Says this person is not a free agent. I've been negotiating with him. And he says the newest member of the SmackDown roster is Braun Breaker. So... Should be a good addition. Hopefully, they have a plan for this guy. He just starts working his way up the ladder to the main event status soon. Probably give him maybe a year he gets into the main event status. Or he's got to win the mid-card title first. Uh, what is it? United States title, I guess. Or Intercontinental title. Whichever one he wants. Whichever title he wants to go for. So, we'll see what happens with that. It should be a good addition for SmackDown. All right, we got the Bloodline segment, final segment to end the show. We got Roman Reigns in the Bloodline there, Solo, Jimmy, and Paul Heyman. Roman says, the people of Utah, you're idiots. <laughs> when we get you together, you're pretty dumb. I don't want you to ruin this when my cousin comes out here. Y'all might go dumb and catchphrase this. Oh, he's so funny. Everything we say has meaning, has purpose. It is information you need to understand. Tonight is the greatest night ever in WWE. They start the uh, crowd starts chanting Cody. Oh, he's like, yeah, that the guy that ruined everything. Tonight we fix it. Tonight is the first night that we can say the Rock is a member of the Bloodline. And then we got the Rock's music hits right there. Oh, Rock comes out. It was like a little delay before he came out uh, in front of the crowd. He did the same thing when the for the Hollywood Rock theme. Oh, like a minute, a minute and a half, and then he come. He came out with the Hollywood Rock theme. So a little bit of similarity here. And the Rock says, "I got some good news to share. Something that is going to make you happy tonight. You have broken an all-time." indoor attendance record for the state of Utah. You broke the record for the largest gathering of trailer park trash The Rock has ever seen. <laughs> That's classic Hollywood Rock, man. Finally. So he says, finally. You want to boo that? Are you sure you want to boo The Rock? Finally, your life has meaning. Finally, you and your 50 wives have a story to tell? Man, 50 watts. Is that a thing? Is that a Utah thing? 50 watts, man. <laughs> That's a lot of bills to pay, man. Good grief. Uh, he said, you and your 50 wives have a story to tell. You'll have a story to tell your 600 inbred grandchildren. And that's what it, it is like to look at greatness in the flesh. Because The Rock has come back to Salt Lake City. You all brought out a side in The Rock that you haven't seen in years. This side of The Rock has always been in here. You, Then he just he just cuts us some dude out in the front row. You shut up, fatty. The Rock will come out there and slap the herpes off your lips. <laughs> you know why you're seeing this side of The Rock tonight? Because The Rock, Roman Reigns, the biggest WrestleMania main event in the history of WrestleMania. You had it in your hands and you've let it go. You flushed it down the toilet, the same toilet you sat your fat asses on and tweeted, we want Cody. So he started mocking him here. And he says, my cousin Roman Reigns beat Cody at WrestleMania last year. All of a sudden, Cody wants a rematch. That's his story. That's not how it works. Think about how stupid that logic is. Think if you can apply that to sports. I know you want to chant what? Sit there and shut up and listen to The Rock. This is important. The Rock is going to... 
going to teach you jabronis. Apply that logic to any sport. The 49ers just lost Super Bowl to the Kansas City Chiefs. What did they do? The Niners? They didn't go, what about our story? We got to finish our story. They took their lumps like men, dusting the, dusted themselves off, moved on like men. That's what they do. Michael Jordan, MJ, he crushed the dreams of your Utah Jazz. He ended the Utah dream story. What did the Utah What did the Utah Jazz do? They took their beating like men and moved on and worked their asses off to get back to the top. So, ninety seven, the Bulls beat them, and then so they worked to get back to the top, and then my, they ran to Michael Jordan again, and he beat him. He whooped their asses again. <laughs> they don't think they haven't won a uh, they haven't won a championship because of Michael Jordan, man. A lot of guys didn't win championships because of MJ. And he says, uh, the the real word the real world doesn't work like that. You don't get a shot at another story just because you want it. You understand that? Because you're entitled. Spoiled spoiled crybaby bitches. Cody Rhodes, The Rock is gonna make sure you walk out of WrestleMania, which is a loser. Cody, your story is your story is just ending and our story is just beginning. That's a little foreshadowing he did there. I'll, I'll explain it after I'm done reviewing this segment. Let you know what I'm talking about. And he says, if you smell. And then he's, he cut it off there and he says, sing along with The Rock is over. You lost that privilege. Shut your mouth. Enjoy the ride that The Rock is taking you on. And then he did, if you smell. And he stopped it there and he says, what the bloodline is cooking. I think they got a shot of that. The ones in the area right there. Okay. So the Rock has officially joined the bloodline. So very excited. Or yeah, this should be exciting uh, TV. Hopefully he's there for like like the next few weeks to like really build this up and kick this into into gear. For the build-up, uh, so it looks like it might be a tag match. The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody and Seth. Doesn't look like it's going to happen at the Elimination Chamber, so it's probably going to happen at WrestleMania on night one. And then night two is going to be Cody versus Roman. All right, so back to that part where... Okay, so he said... So he, he said during the segment, Cody, your story is just ending. And then he pointed to Roman Reigns, and he said, Roman... Our story is just beginning. It's like so, the Rock and Roman Reigns, their story is just beginning. The way I think this is gonna play out, they just gave a clue right there. So story, Cody's story, he's gonna win the title. He just said it's your your story's ending, so he's gonna win the title. At WrestleMania Night Two main event, this is gonna I think this is gonna play uh, out in one or, one of two ways, either the uh. So we get the typical interference during the Cody uh, Cody Rhodes Roman Reigns match. Uh, you're gonna have to see uh, same old interference, bloodline interferes, Solo and Jimmy. And yeah, so they're gonna all beat up Cody during the match, or before they're about to beat him up, the Rock's music hits, and he comes out there and he fights off the bloodline. And uh, yeah, so he pretty much has backup, and then that's how Cody wins. That's either one option. The other one, which I think, uh, if they start teasing this in other promos, in the, either the Bloodline promos now with The Rock involved, or in any Cody Rhodes or Seth Rollins uh, segments, they're gonna start. They're gonna start dropping little clues every week on uh, what uh, of how this is gonna play out. The second way I think this is gonna happen. The bloodline's gonna interfere, or they're about to interfere. Rock shows up, and he's gonna say, pretty much, uh, tell Jimmy and Solo, fall back, just stand down, and they all walk out of WrestleMania. And then Roman's like all pissed off. Oh, listen to me, help me out, man, help me win. And it's not gonna happen. And then that's how they're gonna do the whole. Uh, the Rock's gonna be like the new head of the table, and they just walk out on Roman. I think that'll be the better finish than uh, The Rock uh, 
interfering to fight off Solo and Jimmy. Instead, they all just walk out. So, yeah, it's going to be either one of those two ways I can see this going. They're all, this is all a setup by The Rock to try and get on Roman's good side, and then at the end, he's going to stab him in the back. And then you're going to have the build-up to WrestleMania 41 between The Rock and Roman Reigns next year. So... So the way I'm, that's the way I'm thinking it's gonna happen. Either one of two ways. So, but you never know. We'll see how it's gonna play out. And then, yeah. So next week we got the SmackDown. Got SmackDown next week. Elimination Chamber, and then do my Elimination Chamber predictions. Pretty obvious who's gonna win most of the matches. But hopefully it's a good pay per view. It's gonna be at freaking two a.m. over here on the West Coast. Yeah, I'm probably not going to watch it until like, the regular time, maybe in the afternoon or in the evening. But yeah, so I thought it was okay, decent SmackDown. Not a lot happened outside of the Bloodline segment and the additional Braun Breaker, but that was pretty much it. All right, so that's pretty much it for SmackDown. See ya.